All right, this is from Vanessa. She says, a few years ago, my fiance and I of about seven years at the time had a failure of birth control and made the tragic decision to abort the baby. We were at the time uh, fooled by the leftist propaganda that an unborn baby isn't human. But now, two years later, we're married and we have a beautiful six-month-old and we're unwaveringly pro-life, and we're trying to find God. I've been struggling with shame and anguish over the tragic and terrible decision we made and have been in need of advice on how to move on past this pain I feel. Uh, Terrible situation, Uh, Vanessa. I'm really uh, sorry. I understand how this happens. We are all victims of the narrative. I've talked a lot about... um, about George Washington holding slaves because he lived in this champion of freedom, holding slaves and not really understanding that his slaves wanted to be free because he was so wrapped up in the narrative of the time. The narrative of our time has been for a very long time. The guiding narrative has been that the baby in your womb is just a clump of cells. That narrative makes no sense. Now we start to see that as the science puts it in front of our eyes. But unfortunately, people, if they don't see it, they don't believe it. So here you are. You're in this situation. And shame, I think shame may be the most painful emotion we experience. I think shame is the worst emotion we experience. And I think about 90% of human beings spend their lives running away from the shame they feel because all of us, I think, feel shame because all of us know how broken we are. We all know. We all know our own fears, our own cowardice, our own dishonesty. We all know this about ourselves, but we're always pretending to the person across from us that we're really, what good people. Oh, we're such good. Oh, we're such good people. We're such good people. That's why all those accusations, that's why Jesus doesn't want you to make accusations because those accusations are turning you away from your own shame and your own sin. And because people don't have a process for dealing with shame, they get, you see this in neurotics all the time, it is almost the definition of neurosis, is they go along like a train on a circular track. They keep coming back and you tell them a new fact doesn't change their opinions. You change their mind, their mind changes for 10 minutes, then they go back on that track because they cannot stop and process their shame. And that, I think, is one of the reasons they call Satan the accuser because he understands that you may have good reason to be ashamed, but if he mires you in that shame, you'll never get off that track. You'll never start to grow, whereas God wants you to move into the future. God does not want you to stay back in the flesh, which is in the body, which is in the past, and is scarred and has all the trauma and all that stuff. He wants you to move in, to to follow your spirit into the future. So how do you do that? You're feeling the shame. You think you've done a terrible thing. You have done a terrible thing, and you've done it in this kind of innocence, you were t- carried along in the narrative. God knows all about it. And God's forgiveness is bigger than your sin. You have to believe this. You have to understand it. God's forgiveness is bigger than your sin. Your sin is what it is. My sin is what, listen, there are things that, that I'm ashamed of that I did in my crazy youth that keep me up at night, that I wake up in a sweat. I always try to remember God's forgiveness is bigger than your sin. And once you understand that, once you understand that, you're obligated, you're obligated to let, to, to pray to God for forgiveness, to say that you know what you did was wrong, to say you're sorry you got caught up in the narrative, and let it go and move on. You are obligated to God to do that, but you're obligated to God to move on in his name and in his image and in his path, right? You want to live into his love and the love you give your husband now and the love you give this beautiful new baby who needs you on point, who doesn't need you mired in the past, doesn't need you mired in the shame. The baby who is gone is also with God and that baby doesn't need you mired in shame either. That baby also is safe now and well and wants you to move on with for your new child. And so if you move on in love for your husband, for your baby, For your neighbor, if you can muster it, if you can muster some love for your neighbor, for your friends, if you move on in God's love, you you will love until you feel his forgiveness bleeding out of reality. I feel this all the time. I understand what I am. I know what I am. I don't live in some ideal world where I'm a nice guy or a good person or anything like that. I understand it all. I am just a branch on the vine. You have to live like that. You're obligated to do it because God has forgiven you. God has, you know... I think I said this last week, but it's just a great point. I'm not sure if I said it on the air or said it just on the All Access show. Uh, the priest at my church said, everybody has been ransomed. God has ransomed everybody, but not only everybody takes the ransom and breaks free. And so now you have to take the ransom and break free. God has forgiven you. He has died for her to, to release you from the sin. Let it go and move on in that love, in that in the love. And as you move in on in the love and as you get better at loving, as you learn to love through human beings into God, 
you'll feel that forgiveness and it will let you go. You are obligated to do this. God has forgiven you, so you are obligated to take that forgiveness and move on. And I hope you do. Hey, if you want more great content like this, subscribe and like us.